the Pope and Young Club wants to welcome you as we rally together to ensure our bow hunting opportunities for today and tomorrow. You've come to the podcast that believes in preserving, protecting, and promoting the passion for bow hunting. Join us as we strive to be the voice of today's bow hunter. This is the Pope and Young Podcast. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Pope and Young Podcast. Jason Roundsville here, joined as always by my co-host Dylan Ray. We have with us uh, a guest we're excited to talk to. Uh, we're even more excited to see him perform in Reno at our convention, and you should be too. Nate Hosey's with us today. Nate, welcome. How's it going? Glad to be here. Thanks for having yeah. me. Thanks for jumping on. Hey, we are, uh, I know we just kind of worked out the program for you coming in to Reno, spending some time with us, singing some songs for us. Um you know, for anybody that may not know about you, give give our listeners a background. Yeah, you know, uh, I'm born and raised up in a small dairy town, uh, Montel, Pennsylvania, and I uh, started hunting when I was five, you know, basically going with my dad and my grandpa and started out a lot over bird dogs and uh, hunting pheasants and grouse. And as I got older, got into turkey hunting a bunch and was a competitive caller and obviously whitetail hunting. And now over the last uh, 13 seasons, I guess, I've been a host of uh, headhunters tv with my buddy randy birdsong on the outdoor channel and our boy scuba and it's just been an incredible run you know we've been blessed and fortunate to be a part of the outdoor outdoor industry and to promote you know hunting and the sport that we love so much in a positive light and uh, a respectful you know way to our heritage and the, the hunting atmosphere so you know that's kind of a brief thing you know and in the in the meantime when i'm not out in the woods i'm playing a bunch of music so it's kind of the best of both worlds you know i get the opportunity to get out and to be out in the woods. And if I'm not in the woods, I'm up on stage somewhere. And if I'm not there, I'm where I love to be the most home with my wife and my little boys. That's outstanding. And I actually, uh, I think we met, was it ATA last year? I think Sintlock had, a, so. yeah. had a lounge in there and, and I got to hear you sing. So that was pretty fantastic. Um, really excited. You were able to, to make it to Reno. I know convention is it's it's on our mind every day because we're in the middle of it. But sure. uh, that was pretty exciting. We were able to to work all that out with you. Yeah, and I mean for me, I'm I'm super pumped, and you know it's it's an honor to be there. Obviously, you know with the convention and the organization, I've been a fan, and you know something I've supported for a long time, and and have a lot of respect for. So you know to be a, be able to come out there and play some songs and be a part of it, I couldn't be any more excited. Yeah, great. Well, and we're gonna have. I don't know, the last number I saw was 184 of the biggest animals taken with a bow in the last couple of years. I mean, there's going to be some monsters in that display this year. I can't wait to see it. Yeah, me too. I, I'm uh, I'm not exactly sure if we're going to have room. We've got a huge ballroom, and I still don't know if we're going to have room, <laughs> how we're going to do it all. So, But uh, we're working on that. We've got plan A, B, and C rolling simultaneously. That's we'll what you got to be, work. you know, when it comes to trade show season, no matter what the trade show, you just got to be ready to be versatile at any given moment. We've all Absolutely. learned that enough, you know, anybody in the outdoor space or the business who's been to any trade shows know, you know, you got to be ready to adjust at any moment. Yes, absolutely. We uh, last year, man, we got wiped out. We went to ATA, and I, I think my entire team got wiped out with, with I, I don't know if it was COVID or whatever was going around at ATA. So, really we're excited to make it through unscathed this year. Amen. Amen. Same here. And uh, so, as we're recording this, I think we're both heading out. Uh, what tomorrow to head down to? Or I'm heading out tomorrow to, to head to ATA. So. Looking forward to it, and it uh, should be a good show. Yeah, it should be great. I get in Wednesday evening. Yeah. Now, uh, where where can people find you? Where are you going to be hanging out and spending your time? So, you know, through ATA, really, you know, I spend a lot of time at all of the booths of our partners and, you know, people who are kind enough to be a part of our show. So it's really a time for us to get out there and celebrate. It's like a big pep rally for all of us to get in there and talk with partners about the season and what a great year it's been and the blessings we've had throughout the year. So, I mean, I spend a ton of time at Scentlock and, you know, Matthews and Rio Tree. I'm, you know, basically anywhere around the show you could find me at some point you know i mean i think i'm kind of like all you know everybody you're out there and you want to make sure you see all your friends and everybody and talk to them about their season and about what's come you know what's to come for 2023 
Yeah, are absolutely. You gonna be playing? Are you going to be playing at ATA at all this year? So I'm not. I'm not playing at ATA this year, but I fly, I go to. Um, I got to play in Vegas on Monday. So I head gotcha. out to play at MGM in Vegas on Monday. Very cool. Yeah. Now is that is that a private event? What's that event for, Nate? Yeah, that's a pri- that's a private event out in Vegas. So uh, I mean, it's a private. Let me say it like this: it's a private event that anybody can go to per se. It's it's going to be at MGM at Losers Bar, the you know kind of Nashville scene brought to uh, Vegas, and you know there'll be a private section for the people hosting the party and stuff. But at the same time, the venue is still open to the public if they want to come in. Nice. Yeah, so I'm going to play nice. a few songs out there on, on Monday. That'll be great. There's going to be a lot of folks there because the shot show starts off Tuesday. Correct. Dude. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, and Excellent. I was out there last month. I played for uh, NFR, the rodeo out there. Nice. Yeah, so That's I was out there. Uh, I was out there last month as well. So looking forward. Now, to was that it. with the the big cut, the cowboy Christmas? Was that in conjunction with the elk? Or? No, that I don't know. I mean, it's just I was there just for the NFR. You know, with the with the big rodeo going on and all that stuff. I just went out to to perform uh, during the rodeo week. I don't know exactly. I know there's 10 million things going on during it. I, I'm not familiar with all i'd be lying if i told you i knew everything that was going on i just knew what time i had to be there and what time i had to step on the stage <laughs> come on Nate, you you don't have to admit to that you don't have to say i'd be lying if i told you you just have to sell it and then as long as you really sell it and stick with it people believe you that's well i mean i made it on i made any bull that i rode i made it well over eight seconds so yeah, yeah absolutely eight, eight <laughs> seconds yeah i'm like hey we're halfway there that's exactly so, right living on a prayer yeah well, uh, no, that's uh, that's exciting. I know this time of year everybody's on the road, and it's uh, it's Vegas uh, or it's uh, Indianapolis, and then Reno, and then uh, for me it's Reno, and then Vegas. We're headed down uh, to spend some time with our friends at the Wild Sheep Foundation at, at oh, nice. Sheep Week. Real nice, and uh, they put on a heck of a program. I know Gray Thornton and his his team have been working on it kind of like we're in the middle of our stuff so excited to get down there we just announced a few different con- joint conservation programs with those guys uh that, that should have some pretty good implications for for uh bow hunting down the road so we're excited that's about awesome that. that's awesome yeah speaking of our uh speaking of convention and what's coming up jason uh the, the convention raffle is now live. You can now buy your tickets for convention raffle. So uh, oh. run through the run through the hunts on that raffle. All right, Nate. So here's here's the first question. Well, maybe not the first question. Here's a question. You win this raffle. You have to choose between these four hunts. Which one are you taking? Okay. Choice A, you've got a Yukon moose hunt with McMillan River Adventures. Don Land. Choice B is with Peter Barella for Mountain Goat and Brown Bear combo. Mm. Choice C is with Machwir in Africa. Um, it is a lion, Cape Buffalo, Sable, Crocodile, Lioness Hunt. Um, or choice the, the fourth choice is with Perrin's Rainy Pass Lodge. And uh, Steve and Denise are great friends. They're all great friends of ours. But anyway, um, they came up with a doll sheep, brown bear, caribou, black bear combo at Rainy Pass Lodge. Like, oh, man. Whoever wins this thing, man, I pity him because I don't know how you choose. I, yeah, I mean, th- I thought it would be a little bit easier, you know what I mean? But er- for, nope. I mean, there's like literally something in each one of them that I'm appealing to. But if I was forced to, if you were like, Nate, right now, currently, you've got to pick one, I would probably have to do the Yukon Moose. Just because okay. I think I think really? for a lot of archers, you know, that's always been just a dream. There's just something about, you know, big old moose, you know, rolling through there. And I don't know. I, oh, I, yeah. I think if I had to pick one, that's what I would pick. I'm not saying I'm not, a, you know, I, I wouldn't want any of them. I'm just saying, yeah. If I had to pick one, I'd probably go with the Yukon Moose. All right, that's that's good, Dylan. Let's keep a tally, man. Let's see what. Yeah. 
put a tally up in your office and we're going to ask everybody and see what they pick. So I'll do it. <laughs> I, you know, I don't know. Cause you picked the Yukon moose and you look at those guys and man, when you go talk to Don and see the pictures of the moose that those guys get, oh, it's unreal. Um, and they specialize in bow hunters, you know, it's, they're just massive. No and, doubt. and then you There's look no at, you know, I've had a fascination with mountain goats my whole life. I, I don't, I'm not sure why, but I've never shot one. But man, there, that would just be something. And then it just feels I mean, like such an adventure. You know what I mean? It just, it's, it just feels like such an adventure to go after mountain goats. And yeah, and then, and then all of a sudden you look at that Africa package, and you know a lot of folks have been been to Africa. You know they've hunted the plains game, and and now yeah. all of a sudden it's all next level. It's like oh, a lion, okay, uh, and it's exportable, which is cool. Um, okay. Cape Buffalo, you know, Black Death, um, just, you know, and then my, the one that's the highest on my list is that Sable. That's, yeah. that's what I'm ready yeah, to that's chase. Pretty cool. That's pretty wicked. So, now, and then now, a crocodile. Now mm-hmm. we have to add in, Jason, that the tickets for this raffle are only a hundred bucks and there's only 1500 <laughs> tickets being sold. That's, that's unbelievable. The, yeah. So that's, uh. It, it will sell out. I don't think there's any quest. The last time I jumped in on a raffle like this, it was a hundred dollar raffle, but it was an unlimited raffle. They could sell, you know, 10,000 mm-hmm. tickets. Right. And uh, so, no, we're, we're so blessed to have some amazing partners. And, I mean, gosh, and then you talk to the parents at Rainy Pass. And I'm like, Oh my God. I don't know how to, I mean, everybody wants to go hunt sheep. Now you can for a hundred bucks. If you can find me, <laughs> Nate, I'm telling you, as you're walking around some of these, you know, show season, if you walk around any of these shows, yeah, and you find a sheep hunt for a hundred bucks or less, call me because I'll, I'll do, I'll take it. Yeah, well, I'll call you to let you know that I, I went ahead and got it. You know, yeah, I had to pick that out of your hands. If I see one. Hey, yeah, Jason, you it for Nate, all three of us. Are you gonna have a drummer with you in in Reno? <laughs> So that is still, I guess, up in the air as far as, you know, I still think we need to work out some of the details as to what it's going to be. I mean, I, I'm gotcha. sure to some extent, whether it's full or whether it's some sort of trio style, I mean, I'm, I'm sure I'll have some kind of, uh, you know, drummer there in some fashion for sure. Because we're going to, when we draw that ticket, we're going to need a drum roll. We've never done we a drum roll before, drum but roll. we're going to need a drum roll for that ticket drawing. Well, if not, I mean, somebody's got to be good at beat You know what I mean? Yeah. Somebody's got to be able to do that. Yeah. We'll uh, I don't know, man. You help us Maybe not in that room. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. No, uh, I, think, I think we'll have something for sure. Yeah. Jason, and if man, you had to pick one person at convention to do beatboxing, who would you pick? <laughs> <laughs> Doug Clayton. <laughs> I'm going. I'm going. Tim Razuski. <laughs> oh no. You know what? He surprises you sometimes. He might actually be he able does. to do it. He does. He does. That's right. We, we were at a you mountain archery know. fest. We were at a mountain archery fest, and somebody said, "Hey, why don't you auction this book off?" And I said, "Because we don't have an auctioneer." Tim said, "I'll do it." And I'm like, "Tim, sit down, shut up, dude." And uh, and he auctioned that book off nine hundred bucks for that. Dude, that's what I'm talking book. about. You don't yeah. put it past anybody. You never know. There are people all across this country that could be great at beatboxing. We never knew it. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. You talk about auctioning. I can't wait. I know we got John Bear lined up for convention. Who, you know what? I used to think that John was the best, mm-hmm. and and then uh, and then I got a hold of one of those antelope hunts and sold it at a mountain archery festival with thirty five people in the room for two hundred bucks more than John Bear got at the at our Ogden event. So, you know, I'm, I'm gonna have to remind him of that probably thirty times in Reno. A minimum of 30 times. A minimum of 30 times. I may actually pay people to remind, hey, did you know Jason sold that antelope hunt for more than you did? <laughs> Just remind me. I'll walk up and be like, Man, I had to tell you something. What was it exactly? Uh, oh, yeah, about Jason. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we'll just, uh, we'll have to motivate him a little bit. So No doubt. Me, no, he, uh, he does a great job. We're excited to have him. So it's once again shaping up to be a, a heck of a deal. So if you had to pick one of those, you pick the moose hunt. What? Yeah, is... just just for myself, you know. I mean, it's just been one of those hunts that I've kind of been working my way towards. You know what I mean? There's just something about going after a moose with my bow that it's just it's just right up there at the top. Like I said, it doesn't mean that everything else isn't appealing to me for you know different reasons. It's just 
for some reason, that moose has been one that I just is right up there at the top for me. So would that would that be if you had to pick a bucket list animal, would it become moose? Probably so. Probably so. I mean, I, I just okay. think they're an amazing animal. I think that, you know, Alaska itself is just such, you know, I mean, all of us, you know, we're fortunate and blessed to get to hunt all over the country. And, you know, the tags punched or the animals taken, you know, although it's it's a incredible blessing, you know, a lot of it is just the adventure of, of where you are, the terrain, the hunt itself, where these animals call home. You know, we have so much respect for these animals that we chase. And the, and the terrain that they call home, you know, just Alaska, just, just, you know, from shows that I've watched or, you know, it not, not, not even necessarily hunting shows, but, you know, we all grew up watching the Marty Stauffer stuff and, and all kinds oh, of yeah. things. You know, whenever you see Alaska, it's just for anybody, I think, who loves the outdoors, it's just, you're just hooked. You're just like, my goodness, like, it's like the last frontier, you know what I mean? It's just, it's, it's it just looks like a special place outside of you know, a moose being a special animal, Alaska itself, you know, that the hunt is in the terrain and the, the atmosphere of the place. Yeah, it de that definitely. Oh, you, Alaska Jason? is its own character in the movie. Mm -hmm. sure. Top of the bucket list, Jason, what is it? You know what? My bucket list is ever changing. You know, I, I don't know. It used to be some other stuff. Now all of a sudden I'm like, you know, maybe Maybe there's some opportunities there that, that weren't there before. I know a lot of guys say sheep, and I don't know. I, a, I don't know if I'm a sheep hunter, because you hear those guys talk about the stories of going sheep hunting, and and I, I got to tell you, there's 99% of it does not sound enjoyable. <laughs> I'm, I, you know. Makes it hard to be a sheep hunter, right? It does. I'm like, you know, so, <laughs> so either, hunter, right? It makes it know, hard to become a sheep hunter. Yeah. And it could just be that these guys are like really smart because they're telling everybody else how miserable it is. Just so we're like, yeah, maybe I don't need to. And that's not a bad play either. Yeah. That's not a bad yeah. play either. Yeah. I had a buddy did that at hunting camp. We let him cook chili and it was so bad we couldn't eat it. And then the next day, he, he literally ruined like, craft mac and cheese by overcooking it for like 20 minutes and that was the last time we let him in the kitchen and i think looking back on it i think he had planned that and so i wonder if sheep hunters do the same thing where it's it's definitely possible it's a possibility yeah. for sure so i uh, you know i don't know man top of mind i it's it, it just depends it's probably whatever i'm hunting at the time is my that's bucket right. list item that's right thankful to now, be there no matter what yeah, because I'm not a uh, I, man. Tag soup hurts me. Like, like <laughs> I have apparently, in regards to tag soup, apparently irritable bowels. Because I do not like eating tag soup. Are you, yeah. Nate? Are you a tag puncher or are you a a tag eater? You're like I'm willing to eat a tag to get the animal I want. I'm a tag puncher. Doesn't take okay. much to impress me. You know what I mean? You're in the right. I grew up in Pennsylvania. Right? I'm gonna be honest with you. You know, if it comes in and I like it, you know, it's lights, camera, action, and, and for you know most animals I see, I really like. Yeah, <laughs> you're you're in good company, my friend. That's right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's uh, you know, Fort doesn't Norm. take much to, to make me happy. Yeah, that's a legal buck. Put him down. That's right. That's uh. I think Dylan Good company here. Yeah. Well, it depends on the day. Some days you're like, no, I, I need something bigger. And then other days you're like, mm, I've been sitting in this tree for a week. That looks pretty good. <laughs> yeah. What was that? You said, Jason, you had a, you had an antelope come in and you had decided, yeah, I'm not going to shoot him. But then you said, you looked at him through 10 power binoculars at 20 yards. You're like, man, he looks a lot bigger through the binoculars. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing at 19 yards with uh, 10 power swaros, how, how much better an animal really looks. Yeah. And when you walk up to him later. You know, hey, where's your uh, where's your favorite place to play at? Musically? Yeah. Um man, that's it's tough to say, you know, like when I was growing up. You know, music happened for me in the, in kind of a tragic point in my life. You know, it was in December of 2003. 
I was going deer hunting with my buddy and we were involved in a bad car wreck. He lost control and he hit a tree and I broke my neck. And uh, I went into surgery and, and was life flight to Philadelphia and I was in a halo for you know, several months. And, and in that time period, you know, I've never been really a video games guy, but I started playing like Madden and stuff like that. And after about a month, I was like, I can't play this anymore. It's just like, I got to do something, you know, but I couldn't really go outside much because I had a lot of incisions from surgery and stuff. So like I was kind of cooped up. So I was like, well, I'm going to learn how to play guitar. And I tried that for about 30 seconds. You know, my parents were like, yeah, we'll get you one at that point. I mean, I'm in a halo. How are you going to tell me? No, you're not going to get me a guitar. You know, <laughs> so they, uh, <laughs> They get me the guitar. I try it for like 30 seconds. I'm like, it's physically impossible. This cannot be done. I don't know who these people are that play guitar, but they're not human. So um, long story short, I have three younger sisters and my sister Marla one day came up and she started playing the beginning of that Creedence song down on the corner, you know, that boom, 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 boom. And I mean, she didn't play it good, but she played it to where I was like, okay, I know that song. And how do you know how to play guitar? You know, she's like, oh, my friend Tommy taught me. And Long story short, I'm like, well, I don't even know the people I'm living with here. You know what I mean? Is trying to figure out. How <laughs> this to, is all. This see. is all a lie. Yeah, like who, living who a are lie. These people I call siblings. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, uh, through tragedy, that August, a guy ran a stop sign in our town and hit my mom and my grandma, my sister, and she was killed. And I went through a really difficult time, you know, with my family of, you know making sure, you know, my mom, my dad were okay. My sisters were okay. And it was just a, just a really tough time. But, you know, along the way through my faith and, and all that, you know, kind of found my way out of that darkness. And I, I just remember one day looking at that guitar and, and, you know, I could feel her and I could see her still playing. And I was like, you know, I'm going to just give it a whirl. I'm going to learn how to play that thing, you know? And I didn't think I'd learn how to play good. And at the time I was helping a buddy who, uh, keep in mind, I'm not a builder in any way, but I was a roofer, you know, and I'd, I was more of just labor, you know what I mean? Taking shingles and all that stuff. And I got into college and I started to realize pretty quick that a guitar in college is a cool thing. You know what I mean? And uh, started learning how to play little by little, got into a cover band, started playing all these big shows. And from that moment forward, I mean, I've literally stood on stages that I never thought in my wildest dreams that I would play on. You know what I mean? Not only you know, from the outdoor trade shows, but the amount of country music artists and rock artists, you know, Ted Nugent and folks that I've opened up for along the way has just been mind boggling, you know, to, to, to myself. And I often tell people, you know, sometimes, and for all of us, and it's not, it's not to really highlight my story any more than anybody else's, but sometimes in the toughest parts of your life, you find what's supposed to happen. And, you know, the music has brought a side of things to where you can go out and connect with people and you can go out and talk about your story and you can go out, and you know, music brings people together. And I think there's a very, you know, there's a huge uniting aspect to music in a lot of ways. You know, you can watch the same scene of a, a show with three different tracks and it sets a, a mood for you right away of, about what you may think that show could be about just simply from the track. I mean, you think a journey don't stop believing. I mean, that song is legendary. Every one of us, I don't think anybody that song comes on the radio, you don't sing it. It just sets a mood. And, um, so like I said, along the way, I've never taken for granted anywhere that I've played because I can't believe that I'm standing there in that moment, no matter where it's been. Um, but I, if I were to say the rowdiest place that I play, uh, like if, if I were to say the rowdiest place that I play, it'd have to be Deer Rassic in Cambridge, Ohio. You know, years ago, my my, uh, my buddy Meeker, you know, gave me a shot and and they've had all kinds of amazing artists there. Low Cash, Chris Ganson, you know, Red Aikens, and so many different people. And they, you know, they gave this old redneck a shot to get up there on the big stage. And the people of Ohio, I can't say enough about them. I mean, they are just out there to have a good time and, and it has become an annual thing where I tell them you're basically gonna have to kick me out. You know what I mean? Like I'm coming back and I'm playing again because they're just so much fun. It's, it's such great people. It's uh Jurassic's a great event, you know, obviously supporting hunting in the outdoors and people just come out and have a good time and, and celebrate hunting, fishing and, you know, the USA. And it's a, uh, it's a wild place to play, but I love playing at home too, you know, where my family can come out and see. And, um, but like I said, I mean, I, I enjoy them all for different reasons, um, but probably the wildest is Deer Asset in Cambridge, Ohio. Now, what about musically? What What is like what you feel so far has been your pinnacle? What was like your high high moment where you're like, holy, 
you've mentioned a bunch, but what was the one where you're just like, there is no way I am actually doing this right now. And the re the reason I ask is I was, this is just right before COVID we were in uh, Reno for, I think it was SCI and we we're hanging out. Uh, one of our friends, uh, Nick Hoffman was there. Yeah. And so he, he texted me, he said, Hey, where are you guys at? He's, and, and he's like, come up to the, I'm, I'm up just by the stage. Come on up. So we're, we're up there and we're hanging out with, with him just kind of, you know, BS and whatnot. And he's like, Oh, I'll be right back. And we're like, okay. And this guy grabs his fiddle and goes on stage and played his fiddle to the devil went down to Georgia with the Charlie Daniels band. And I'm like, I don't know. I can't play a fiddle. I can't play any instrument, but I am looking at this and I'm like, I cannot imagine. I just can't imagine like for a fiddle player, anything that he could even compete with that. Well, I mean, so, like, you know, Nick as a Nick as a musician is, I mean, he's he's top shelf. He's as good as they get. You know, he's he's a great friend. He's a great person, great hunter, an incredible musician. You know, for so for him to get up there, I mean, you know, I can imagine that being a massively pinnacle moment for him. You know, just in you know, I mean, you think of Charlie's Daniels, his legacy, everything that he's. I mean, he's just a wonderful person that we all respect and support. You know, so but so I can imagine that being a, a pinnacle moment for Nick. You know, but. You know, he's, he's been a great friend over the years and somebody I truly support. I mean, he's that dude rocks. He's awesome. Yeah. They had a nice guy too. He's just, a really nice you guy. Root for people like that. Yeah. Yeah. He, him and I, we played, uh, we played some songs together at like, uh, we, we performed at ATA before together and we played at, uh, back at when they used to have the golden moose awards and stuff, him and I and Christy Lee cook did a song together and he's, he's an insane talent. He's a, he's a, He's a he's a super talented guy and just a good person, man. Somebody I really proud to call my friend. Um, you know, as far as myself at a pinnacle moment, I mean, like I, I kind of like you with like your bucket list hunts. It's kind of like I've had so many of those moments to where I'm sitting there and I'm like, you know, like opening for Ted Nugent, for example, you know, in Ohio. I'm just like, like this is insane to me. You know what I mean? Ted has been That's somebody cool. that yeah, that I've, I've supported so much. And what's weird and what's wild is like my parents used to go see Ted back in the day. And so like my dad and all them come to the show and like Ted's like, oh man, I want to shout out to my buddy Nate and all this. And my dad's like, my mind is just blown. You know what I mean? Like he's just like, nice. my mind is blown to hear Ted Nugent, you know, giving a shout out. And so that was a really cool moment, but really any of them, you know, different buddies in the country music world that I've shared the stage with has been, uh, and, and, you know, become friends with all of them are pinnacle for me because like I said, music kind of found me, you know what I mean? Music found me in a tough time of, you know, I needed something. I needed an outlet in, in, you know, I say, you know, music found me. Nice. Yeah. yeah that's, you know, you talk about Ted Nugent. I don't know the likes to hunt more than that guy. I mean, oh, he's awesome. Yeah, he, he rocks, man. you know, he's awesome. Yeah. He, he lives for it. So that's always, always inspiring to see. No doubt. So who's on your bucket list people you'd like to play with? If you could say, you know what, I would like to go do something on stage with, who would that be? Um, I mean, I have a lot, uh, but like, I always thought like growing up, one of my favorite bands, which is, it's not country or, you know, but one of my favorite bands growing up, I always liked the Goo Goo Dolls, like Johnny Resnick. And I just, there was something about the, the tones, you know, the guitar tones and like they, they had a lot of different tuning and a lot of their writing was always interesting to me because like when you take country music, for example, or writing a country song, most of the time there's a story that we understand, right? So there's a start, there's a finish, there's everything that happened in between. And you kind of get it, you know what I'm saying? To where a lot of times with like a 90s writing per se or 90s rock per se, you know, you, you take your Goo Goo Dolls, your Matchbox 20, Third Eye Blind, those kind of bands. I always loved the songs without really knowing what they were about. You know what I mean? Like in the writing was always so interesting to me because I'd be like, like it makes sense, but I don't know what it's about. You know what I mean? Like, it's kind of hard to... Right, right. And it, it, it always kind of got me as a person, that, you know, in the sense of like, okay, if I sat down and wrote a song, you know, for example, if I'm writing, well, like, let's say Strutton, for example, off the Woods track, right? So we know Strutton's about turkeys, okay? So it talks about, you know, the sun's coming up, this, that, or whatever. And 
you know, by the time it's over, hey, you're the one strutting. Why? Because you punched your tag in that big old long beard. But like, if you take a song like Name, for example, you know, we we cut a country version of Name one one time in the studio. We had some extra time, and I just love that song. It's like, I really don't know what it's about, you know. And I, and I couldn't sit down and write that song because I don't even know how to get my mind there. You know what I mean? It's kind of a so I've always kind of been intrigued by that. Um, you know, huge fan of obviously like Thomas Rhett, Luke Bryan, Jason Aldean. Those guys would would love to do something at some point with, with any of those guys. But I don't know, kind of going back to my, when I was a kid, like I just was always intrigued by the Goo Goo Dolls and their writing. It's just interesting. It's cool stuff. Very cool. Nice. And they had some big songs. I mean, you remember like Iris, you know, like, I told the world. like, you know, those songs are like, they're just, they're huge songs, you know, huge songs still being played today. Tons. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. Hey, Dylan. You can jump on stage with anybody. Who would it be? Oh, man. Dead or alive? It has to be alive. Well, I mean, it, alive would probably be easier. Yeah, I think I think dead would get weird for everybody. <laughs> I didn't know if you made yeah. anybody in history. Um, <laughs> you idiots. Like, who you want to um, jump up on a stage with? I mean, I've heard oh, you man. sing. You need somebody who's alive to carry oh, that yeah, tune, for, man. For sure. Oh yeah, dude. Like I said, I can't play the radio. Yeah. Um, dude, I'm gonna go with my. You know, I heard this guy one time at ATA show. His name was Nate Hosey. Yeah. If I could, if oh, I could yeah. jump on stage with him, dude. That's right. Yeah. Well, let me dope. tell you something. Get ready. I will. Because it's on. Hey, yeah. Nate. Get, what, yeah. What do you think about this? There. I mean. You know, I get to share a stage with you because I'm probably going to be the one to introduce you in yeah. Reno, which, hey, yeah. I'm I'm excited about that. because I like introducing folks like you and John Mayer that have actual talent. Um, but what if, is there a way? Could, could we work this out? Would, would you allow maybe for Dylan like to do air guitar behind you would that be a yeah you can do air guitar backup while you're on there stage? is there is no doubt that's happening he could actually hold the guitar you know what i mean if he doesn't know how to play it was kind of funny we were out there playing at nfr and they had the basketball games are going on out there and i think uh, it was indiana was playing arizona i believe so like the mgm was packed with these people because they were i think they were playing inside of mgm somewhere inside the arena so after the game, Arizona had won and, you know, everybody was was having a good time and celebrating. They're all at the show. And this one guy's like, hey, I will give you a hundred bucks if I can come up on stage and just hold a guitar. I was like, well, how about this? You keep your hundred bucks and you just come on up on stage and you can hold a guitar with us, you know? So he gets up there and he's holding the guitar and, you know, his friends and his family are all there and they're all going crazy. And I was like, man, I was like, it feels like you're a natural up here. And he's like, I, I feel like I am. You know, I'm sitting here. I was like, you feel like you're natural. And I'm sitting here thinking about, you know, you're thinking I should have been a rock star. And I'm sitting here looking out across this crowd and seeing nothing but cowboy hats. And I'm thinking, you know, I should have been a cowboy. So, <laughs> you know, him and I, we go into an acoustic version of Toby Keith's, you know, I should have been a cowboy that this whole play, the whole venue. I was like, you got to sing it with this. And I mean, you know, they were tagging me in pictures and videos for weeks of just like an unbelievable time. So the more on stage with me, the merrier. I'm there for I'd a rather good do. I'm gonna do fun. the tambourine. That's, gonna, I need it. We need. Tambourine. We need a little bit of that. Yeah, the, the tambourine, is cowbell. The we right. need more shakers. cowbell. Yeah, we need more cowbell. That's right. <laughs> we need more cowbell. That's right. All Jason's right. gonna play the spoons. There we go. It'll I, be a blast. You know. I uh, yeah. All right, Dylan. We will have a cowbell for you for Nate's performance. That's in right. Everybody. Right. I hope you so, can. Uh, yeah. I hope you can play even when somebody behind you's banging off key, because that's what's going to happen. Hey, trust me, man. I played in cover band for a lot of years, and that's just the way you get <laughs> through it. He said it. Like... Yeah, <laughs> dude. Listen, you know, we played a show one time in Scranton, Pennsylvania, and we're in the middle of this, you know, cover band show. And who comes up on stage with us? Dennis Rodman. Oh, jeez. Oh, you talk was about it, Dustin. Yes. You talk about getting adjusted and being versatile on the stage. So Dennis Rodman comes up on the stage. No with us, way. That's and I'm cool. like, I can't even believe I'm like, and like he's real tall. Like I'm like, all right, he's he's like, I definitely can't 
get a layup on this guy. You know what I mean? Like if I'm given the opportunity, I'm getting, <laughs> I'm, I'm literally getting rejected to the top bro. So he gets up there and we're talking. And I'm like, first off, I'm like, I can't even believe like Dennis Rodman's. It's like so random that I'm like, I, I really can't believe like, so what do you want to do? And you know what song I sang with Dennis Rodman? Probably something weird. Pearl Jam, Better Man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so of all the songs I could have sang with Dennis Rodman, we sang Can't Find a Better Man, you know, with Pearl Jam. Uh, yeah, I still got pictures from him. It was wild, wild. Man. That's cool. That's that cool. Is so cool. understand the cowbell, the cowbell is not going to, it's not going to throw me off. Now we got to get, let's get Dennis no, to convention to play with Nate. He, that's right. Yeah, that's, uh, well, all I know is I let's see. I'm looking at it. I'm I'm probably gonna run into Nate at ATA here this week, and then I'll be in Vegas next Monday for the shot show. So I'm bringing my hundred bucks, man. Come on, buddy. That's it. <laughs> the people love awesome. Katy Perry out there. We can get there. We can get there. All right, that'd be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, well, Nate. You know, I, I got to tell you, man. The, the one question we had some great, great uh, answers today, but the one question we ask everybody on this show is when you find yourself, whether you're in a tree stand chasing whitetails or whether you're hunting Yukon moose in Alaska, what is that one non-traditional item that you have with, with along on every hunt? Well, for a long time, it was those old school caramel candies, you know, with the cream in the center. Yeah. You know, you know those candies? Oh, of course. I do. It They're became, out, by the way, it just yeah, it became, it, it became a, a necessity in a lot of our hunts for scuba and I, you know, every day at 9 a.m. We'd cheers with a coffee and we'd sit there and eat a couple of those those uh candies I, I forget what they were called but you know you know which ones i'm talking about you know oh, so yes. that was uh pretty non-traditional when it comes to pennsylvania and the heritage here every opening day i mean there's no way we're not taking a coconut cream pie tasting cake with us i mean that's just tradition <laughs> and it will be gone by 7 30 especially now it's gone by seven because my little boy's been hot with me a bunch so it's gone even nice. earlier yeah nice now hold on jason we got to have a follow-up question <laughs> All right. When you're playing a show, what's one non-traditional musician musical item that you always have with you? You know, I really don't musically, I really don't have anything, I guess, that would be untraditional. You know, that's that's a good question, but I don't really that's have a bum answer. Like, you gotta think of something. You got something. Non-traditional. I, I really don't know. I mean, it's pretty the music side is pretty straightforward. I, I hate to even think I'd be that. Carrying but, a, I'd be carrying a picture of Dennis Rodman with me every time. That's well, I'm that doing. is on my phone. You know, I keep that for any time I need to prove the story. Yeah. So let's go with that. Because it is on my phone, I will show you at ATA. Perfect. That, that, that like, sounds good. You know that what? Makes, here's, here's the, here's the you challenge. With Dennis Rodman. You know what I mean? Because if you just randomly say, well, I played a better man with Dennis Rodman, everybody's like, no. So I'm like, oh, yeah, well, what's this picture of? <laughs> okay. Well, here, here's the challenge, Nate. We're going to do this and we're going to post it. We, we might even do some kind of giveaway or something. Anyway, uh, at ATA, let's get the, the three of us connected up. You can pull up your Dennis Rodman picture for verification. We'll take a picture of that and send it out to all of our folks just just to verify. Not that we have it any sounds great. questions about it. Sounds that'll, great. Uh, that'll, that'll be, be funny. To see you guys out there in Indianapolis. Yeah. And then that way, I our wish. podcast listeners get a good laugh out of it, and everybody else will be like, that doesn't make any sense. What are they doing? I wish I was there like, was look. somebody, Jason, that we could send on stage at our convention that would top Dennis Rodman, but I just don't think that's possible. The only regret I have <laughs> is after singing the Better Man, I should have just been like, look, can I try to take it to the hoop one time? Oh yeah. You know what I mean? Let me just let me dig deep, get a pair of wind pants, give him my all, and see if I can't score on Dennis Rodman. I mean, now, I think I probably would have been injured, but it would have been worth it. How long ago was this? Long time ago. Like probably he wasn't, he wasn't old and bum. He 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 was still No, he wasn't on I mean he was I don't think he was in the league anymore, but no, he wasn't like it wasn't like five years ago. I mean, it's probably going back He's probably going back close to 20, 15. 
Oh, wow. Yeah, I was hoping he'd be like last year, and I'd be like, maybe you could do it. I mean, he's old. But, uh, you know, probably not. <laughs> no, probably when not he was there, you know, no I'm way like, I could have you know, already accepted me. Yeah. Is he? It would have simply just been to end up on ridiculousness, you know, as the ball got rejected through the wall behind me. Yeah. No way is he older than you, Jason. Is he younger than you? I don't know. How old is he? I don't know. We'll, we'll Google it. But uh, 60, 61. Is he really? 61. But, the, but right. the toll that his life has taken on him makes him 74. I'm just yeah. going to go ahead and say <laughs> At that. At least. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, man. Still, the I think he was a multiple year NBA defensive player of the year. Oh, he's un- he was unbelievable. Oh, yeah. Five. 100%. Unbelievable ball player. Yeah. 75 one leg, and he could probably still outdo most of us. There's no yeah. doubt. Yeah, I can't take him now. There's yeah. No Dennis, if yeah. you're listening, we're and I'm not taking anybody between like you and Nate Hosey. What's that? Right. I said, Dennis, if you're listening, we need a one on one match between you and Nate Hosey. <laughs> that would be unbelievable. It will be it will be part one of the challenge. Part one is a, is a one on one tournament. You know, Dennis versus Nate. Part two will be a. Uh, you got to start training it. You know, if he if he accepts the offer, I got to call Cam Haynes up. You know, I got to start running these hills. Yeah. You know what I mean? I've got a lot yeah. of training to do if, if he responds. Yeah. Part two will be an archery component, just to That's just right. to level the field a little bit. That's exactly right. You know, so. he's weird enough to just like walk out and be like phenomenal at archery too. Like, yeah, but I'm going to have, I... I'm gonna have Levi Morgan paint up and shoot in my place. There you go. That's what I would do. There yeah. you go. Yeah. Well, you know, if you got, if you got to run those hundred mile races, you just have Cam Haynes right. sit in for you. Levi Morgan does the shooting part. You know, might as well grab like Shaq to do the basketball. Angle. Yeah. They're like, Nate, uh, what like, do you do? I'm like, I simply, I stick to just trash talk. That's all I do. Yes. 100%, yeah. <laughs> all I do is trash talk. Your goal yeah. has to be trash talk you enough to where they back out of the trash. actual challenge. That way you never have to show your true color. I'm simply just chat. That's all I am is chat. Yes. <laughs> that was, you know, trash talk explains 90% of my basketball game. That's exactly right. I, That's all I got. I don't know what it was. I could never shoot a basketball. So I was a rebound specialist. I was like, this is my paint. I own it. You're trespassing. Get out of here. These are my elbows. Yeah. Nice. Well, Nate, hey, man, thank you so much for jumping on with us. You bet. Thank you guys for having me. I'm proud to call you guys friends and uh, look forward to seeing Indianapolis and uh, Reno come spring. All right. Sounds good, man. We'll see you there. Yeah. Wish you guys nothing but the best. Thank you again for your time. Appreciate you. And cheers to you guys. Cheers to the USA. Amen.